guys, it's Cindy the Scrapologist and Lily, my little sidekick. Hi, Lily. <laughs> you don't know it, but um, Lily's in every single video. Well, she's behind the scenes in every single video that I shoot because this dog just um, doesn't want to ever leave my side, especially when I'm not feeling well. So um, today I'm just going to do a little bit of a chat. I have some things that I want to tell you about, and then I'm going to do an unboxing. Your uh, Amanda from Your Creative Studio, she sent me the July subscription box. Yay! I was so excited. Thank you, Amanda. So I'm going to do an unboxing of that, and I'm quite sure I will make some kind of ephemera or a journal page or something at the end. So stay tuned for that. I wanted to just update you on a few things, how I'm feeling, because so many of you have asked and um, tell you what is in store for my YouTube channel. So just a little bit of chat and then we'll get to the unboxing. The first thing I wanna say is thank you so much for all of the love and kindness that you've sent my way since, since I've been sick. And I wanna just update you because so many of you are asking, I am starting to feel better. I've been on the, uh, the lupus meds again for now two months and it usually takes three months before you really feel better, but as of today, I'm in full remission again, yay, and I'm having way more good days than bad days, so uh, I'm sure that I will feel even better in the days to come, so I'm excited to really work on my channel. I've got so much love and support around me, not, not just my dog, who always knows when I don't feel well, um, but I've got my husband, my parents live here, and then such a wonderful paper crafting community. So thank you all. I actually had one person who gave me a thumbs down when I was talking about my lupus. And you know what? It's going to make me feel better if I just say <laughs> to that person. <laughs> Why would somebody do that? I don't get it. But anyway, um, it didn't really bother me. It just... It just sort of makes me laugh, but um, everybody, this will say 99.9% .9 of people were super supportive and concerned, and um, so thank, thank you all. So while I, <laughs> while I was sick in bed, I had um, lots of time to brainstorm and think about what I wanted to do when I felt better, uh, because that's what my mindset is, that I'm always going to come out of this and feel well again. So I had big plans for when, when I would feel better and I want to just tell you some of the YouTube videos that I'm going to be doing. The first thing I thought of is, is doing a video on how to craft when you're in pain. It seems like a lot of the people who follow me are in their 50s and 60s. I certainly am in that category too, that age category. And one of the symptoms that I have when I'm in a lupus flare is excruciating pain. It's different for every person, but for me, that's when I know that I'm heading into a bad place with the lupus. And the last thing I want to have happen is have that affect me so that I can't do what I need to do to feel happy. If I can't do my music, if I can't play my piano, and I can't craft, then I'm miserable. So I think a lot of you from what I'm seeing on, on my Facebook page and other communication that I've had with you is that a lot of you are in that boat. You have carpal tunnel or you have arthritis. I see people crafting with, with splints on. When I was back in my 20s, I actually had a business called Workplace Risk Assessments and I went out to businesses and factories and did ergonomics assessments, evaluations, and redesigned workstations to be ergonomically correct. And so uh, a year or two ago, I started looking at my own workstation. I was crafting in, in pain, and I thought, why have I not set up my workplace here to be ergonomic? So I have a number of simple things that I do so that when I'm in pain, I can still continue to craft. And I want to do a video about that. There are a lot of products out there that are designed ergonomically that are a little better for your hands, back, shoulders, neck, um, when you're crafting. And so I want to just share with you some of the things that I do. That's one of the videos I want to do. Um, for those of you who are really into vintage, I want to show you how to do letter locking and Victorian folding. Before staplers, um, there people use those two techniques 
to be able to send letters and they're really cool and I want to show you how to do them because if you like vintage you will love these two techniques. I also want to do a tunnel book. I've always wanted to do a tunnel book and I'm just going to find the time. It's on my list and I'm going to find the time to do it and teach it to you all. A tunnel book is where you open the book and then you look inside and there's a hole in the middle and there's a scene that goes all the way down to the back of the book. Wanted to do those one of those for a long time and I'm going to do it and show you all how to do it too. Um, I'm going to, let's see, just, I have s just scribbles and scribbles and pages and pages of ideas here. Um, I'm going to do a phase box, so Google that and see what that's all about. Um, crafting while you're traveling or crafting while you're watching TV, I do that a lot, show you some of my tips. And, um, one of the other things that I want to do, and hopefully I don't tear up when I'm talking about this, but um, I want to do an Alzheimer's memory book. My dad, who lives with me, has Alzheimer's, and when I was working as a music therapist, one of the main things that we do is we do, uh, one of the main techniques that's really effective is doing a memory book and incorporating it with your loved one's favorite songs to help them when people have Alzheimer's they lose their story they forget their memories who they were their experiences that's what changes them they lose their story they lose their memory and uh, if you can help to bring some of those memories back on occasion it's a beautiful thing and I'm sure that a lot of you out there who are watching are dealing with somebody with Alzheimer's or dementia and so I'm going to make a memory book for my dad and I'm going to show you all how to do that as well so yay I got through that without crying <laughs> um, I'm gonna do some iris folding that's always fun I haven't done that in years since I stopped making a lot of cards I'm going to follow up on some of my top videos one of my uh, if it's not my number one it's my number two I, I don't know I haven't looked in a while um, uh, I did collage basics how to collage and that was a super popular video so I'm gonna do some more craft 101 videos just getting back to basics on different art art techniques that may help you in your crafting and inspire you and give you some ideas so um, like I said I just have tons more of ideas I purchased a new camera setup I'm gonna be using it's not here yet but I'm gonna be showing my face a lot more I'm uh, I'm not happy with doing all videos where you're just seeing my hands uh, so I'm, I'm going to be showing my face a lot more when I can get all of that set up, got a new microphone, etc, etc. So anyway, if you would please subscribe and hit the notification button, you won't miss any of the videos and you'll help support my channel because I need to um, pay for all of that that I just purchased <laughs> while I've been sick and sick not working, you know. Um, online shopping just is not good. <laughs> So, well anyway, um, that's all the news for now. I'm going to go ahead and change the view to my desk, do the unboxing, and then I'm sure at the end I will make something from the box, whether it's junk journal related or it'll be some paper craft, um, ephemera or, or I don't know. I don't know yet. You'll, you'll see at the end. Okay. Well, thanks for listening and let's go to my desk. Okay, so here's the July subscription box from your creative studio. Let's open it up. I haven't looked inside yet. I just, all I did was remove the tape. And that, this is the name of the shop, your creative studio. And there's always a, well, I shouldn't say always because this is only my second box. But I think that on the business card, there's always a hint as to what the theme is. Last time, there was a dragonfly on the card. And there were some dragonfly related elements in there which I loved and I'm now I'm looking at this if this is vintage office supplies oh my gosh and it says don't worry I will be here holding you tight she has just such a nice business card and thank you so let me just open this and I do try to keep this whoops I do try to keep the the packing paper here. It's always stamped with such lovely images. Let's just pull this out. 
Uh oh. Ooh. Fun things are falling out. Look. Oh my gosh. I love these. I'm definitely going to be using those in a junk journal. So it is going to be vintage off supply related. Yay! Yay! All right. Okay, so here's the cling stamp that goes with this kit. Ooh, this sticker came off nicely. Look, yay. Oh, and look, it's one of these clips, but a decorative one. That's excellent. I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna stamp with these um, once I see if there's any more stamps in here. I'll get my blocks. I think this is another stamp. I think this is two more of the same, if that's what's on. Yeah, two more of these binder clips. Oh, what a fantastic theme. I believe that her boxes are pretty much always vintage looking. So you can't go wrong if you really like junk journaling or like anything vintage. Oh, they are, they're, they're binder clips. So we have three different sizes here. And at the end, I'm gonna stamp with those. And then I always, um, I, I keep saying always, like I've had a million of these boxes. The last box, I saved these envelopes and have been using them. So, you know, I'm gonna use every bit of this box. This is washi tape. This also has a binder clip on it. Let's pull this off carefully. The stickers are coming off nicely. Oh, this is fantastic. I love this. Where's the end? Can't find the end. There it is. It is vintage office supplies. My light is bad today, sorry. One minute, sun one minute it's sunny, the next minute it isn't, but yeah. This, I wish I could get more of this because I think I'm gonna use this right up. I love that washi tape, really nice. And then sticky notes, those are really nice. And just like in the other box, some things are, some things have another manufacturer's label on them, but some, some things say your creative studio. So I assume that these are her design because they don't have another company's name on them, which I think is really amazing that she can do this month after month after month. But these are really nice. These are beautiful. Ooh, they're quite sticky. Nice. It's like a clipboard with a vintage bicycle and some images. And I love the tea stained look of this. The patina on it, I guess you'd say. Really super nice. And are these stickers or rub ons? Ooh, these are pretty. They look like clear stickers. Let me find a piece of. Well, well here's a mini album I'm working on. Let me see if that'll. Yeah, aren't those pretty? They're like sprigs of lavender. I think that's what these are. Lavender's one of my most favorite plants. I drink lavender tea in the morning on occasion. So yeah, these are clear, clear stickers. I don't wanna pull one off because I don't wanna ruin it. But they're clear, clear stickers. And I said in the last video, the last unboxing, that I don't normally use stickers. So these, uh, the June box really encouraged me to start using stickers again. I have, a, I have a whole bunch of them in my stash. So these are pretty and there's some sayings on there. Life is not as bad as you think. <laughs> I like that. A good saying, good words to live by. A vintage notepad, again this has 
her name on it, her business name, your creative studio. These are always fun to tear off and use. And you can use the covers too, don't forget about the covers. Really nice. These match the the sticky notes really well. This she coordinates her boxes so nicely. I mean everything just goes with everything else. So you you don't have to you think about anything. If you're if you're creating, you can just pull everything out from the one box and it all is themed. These are really pretty. There's several different styles in here. Love it. She puts a lot in the box too. Oh, more? I need some more stamps. Yes, a whole stamp set. Oh, wow. That's incredible. That's really incredible. You get so much in this. Oh, these are so nice. I'm loving these. This is right up my alley, this theme. So we're gonna play with some stamping, definitely. And it goes on and on. Ooh, these are more stickers, deco stickers, made in China. Those are some of the images. Definitely vintage. These would be nice for if you were making a steampunk or uh, what I really like about these is it's so hard to find things when you're making a masculine themed album. Oh, these are super nice. Now these kind of stickers I would use all the time because they're sort of vellum, but they have sticky on the back. So they have a vellum texture. They're not all shiny like stickers normally are. Really nice. Gas pumps and bicycles and vintage autos. Some, some uh, steam, I think that's a steam car. I'm not sure. Another automobile, an old pickup truck. <laughs> so these are really, really nice for a masculine theme. Love that. I don't have a, a lot of masculine stuff in my stash. And then these are, what does it say? Cottage Garden. Made in China. They look like scraps of paper maybe? Yeah. Just scraps of Scraps of vintage images, really nice. There's some postcards, the backs of postcards. Those will be fun to work with. You're getting too caught up in things that don't matter. Ooh, I know who I'm giving this to. <laughs> I'm setting that aside. <laughs> so these look like they're all vintage postcards. So cute. Very nice. I do have a vintage postcard digi kit in my shop where I have um, digitized some of the postcards from my private stash. So um, I have a lot of these, but it's always nice to have um, other images. And then more stickers. Again, the binder clips. These are very nice. Little binder clips. And last but not least, sheets of vellum. Really beautiful. I love to make envelopes out of vellum. There's a whole bunch of different images. These are really nice. I love the, the little shot of pink on there. A little shot of color, a little bit of red in amongst all the vintage and a little bit of green and more red there. I like that. Doesn't make it so monochromatic. So another just super 
generous gift box. Thank you so much, Amanda. And I think that this is just a fabulous subscription. It's well thought out. Some of the items are curated. Some seem to be her own design. They're always so, um, the themes are vintage. They're always so well thought out and everything just goes with everything else. I, I love this. So let's play with these stamps first of all and see how they do. I need to go get my acrylic blocks and then let's, um, let's maybe make something. Let's dig right into this fun box. I'll be right back. Okay, well, it's actually a couple of days later. I had to um, pause what I was doing to get some get some orders out this week, and then uh, my video didn't my audio didn't come out on this video, so I'm just doing a voiceover. My hands are not going to match my voice here, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I'm doing. When I saw the metal clips in this um, month's subscription box, I immediately thought of the little clipboards that I love to make. They're really neat in journals and they're really nice as gifts because you can clip ephemera all onto them. This is an example of um, one of the ones that I've made in the past and I do have a tutorial on how to make this um, in my videos. It has a little flip out and a couple of pockets with tags. Sometimes I decorate the back and then I clip some goodies, some ephemera onto it with a little metal clip. And the reason I like these, I'll show you what I like to do, is I just stick them in my journal. You can, um, you can attach them if you want with, with um, usually fabric for something this thick would be good but they also are great for traveling. They, they, you can use them as a bookmark um, you can also put a bunch of ephemera on, on the clip so that when you're traveling you have some ephemera that you can pull out if you want to start journaling. So I really like these. And then the little ribbon at the top, that helps it serve as a bookmark and it gives your journal a little more interest to look at. So off camera I did make, I started a little mini clipboard with the July subscription box from Your Creative Studio. And I'll show it to you here. The first thing I did was I used one of my journal cards, the vintage moon cards that are a digital kit in my shop. I also have a tutorial on what to do with these and how to make make this. Um, I've affixed it to watercolor paper, distressed the edges, inked the edges. And the, the pocket at the bottom there is actually the business card from, from the kit that I just tore and distressed. And I sewed the whole thing onto a scrap of Tim Holtz scrapbook paper that I had hanging around. For this, I used um, excuse me, I used the post-it notes, the sticky notes, and I affixed it to a thicker piece of scrapbook paper and punched a hole in it and I made a little tag out of it. This is one of the envelopes that the stamps, one of the stamps came in. I really like how thick these are. I love these envelopes a lot. And I used some of the stickers and washi tape from the kit and just put a piece of washi tape on the back and then distressed the whole envelope and that goes in the little pocket. And for this, I wanted a little pop of color because everything was looking a little monochromatic for me. So um, everything was really sepia toned, a lot of brown. So I chose this piece of scrapbook paper and I made a tag out of it. And when I was first looking at the stamps, I didn't notice this stamp. I really like it. And I think it's meant to be more of a tab where you would fold it in half right there and then fold it in half and affix it to something and use it as a tab which is really cool and I didn't notice that when I was first looking at it so I but I wanted it I wanted to use the whole thing so I just stamped it onto a piece of craft paper and put it at the top of the tag and right here I'm telling you how much I love this stamp set I really really do I love the images on on all of these and I have a couple of stamps on my desk that like these that I use all the time so I just leave them there on my stamp on my a little stamping area that I have 
And these are ones I think I'm going to use quite a bit, and they're just going to stay right on my desk. I really, really like them. The other thing is, um, in the last unboxing that I did, I wasn't sure about this plastic thing, if I was supposed to pull it off. It's really hard to get off, so I thought it was part of the stamp, but there is a protective coating on these rubber stamps, these foam, on the foam part that comes off so that you have the sticky so you can put them on an acrylic block. They're a little um, hard to use um, because the foam is very thick and I had a little bit of a hard time judging how hard to push. I was, you'll see when I show you some of the other elements when I was using the stamps that I pushed a little too hard sometimes. So I'm getting used to the stamps. Then with the vellum, I used my envelope punch board and I made an envelope. I love making envelopes out of vellum. I just think that they look really unique and they're fun to decorate. I put one of the stickers on the little tab there on the, on the front. But when you're um, using vellum, you need some vellum tape. So this is a, um, an easy runner from Scrapbook Adhesives and it is specifically for vellum. I'm going to put the link below. Mine is quite old. This is probably from the 1990s, I think, and so it's falling apart. I'm going to have to get another one. But when you're taping with vellum, you don't want to use glue or double-sided tape or anything that's thick. You can't use your regular tape runner. So that's a thin adhesive design specifically for vellum, and you cannot see it. All of the other things that you use, you're going to probably be able to see. Inside the vellum envelope, I just played around with the stamps a little bit. So I took a piece of paper from the paper pad and just folded it in half and made a journal card and I really like the the images again uh, I had a little trouble with this one that's supposed to be a paper clip it's teeny weeny and I pressed too hard so I'm still figuring out how much pressure to put on that tiny tiny stamp I, I couldn't quite get it to come out I'm, I'm pushing too hard so I'll have to practice with that and I'm sure I'll get the hang of it eventually and um, I just used my um, little kit that I have from Amazon that has all the letters in it that was real cheap, like 10 or 12 bucks, and stamped in the word notes up there. And pressed too hard on that too, so I don't know what was wrong with me that day. I was getting aggressive with my stamps. <laughs> so that's just a little journaling card that I made. And then I took um, some pieces of scrap that I had and made little tags and used that smaller stamp to make little, you could write words on there or do a little journaling or affix something fun to there. And then because this is kind of office themed, I made a Rolodex card and I just covered it with another piece of paper from that pad because it was already collaged for me. So I, I really like the look of this. Um, and then I did that stamp right there to make a journaling spot. Um, I couldn't fit notes up there, so I just said us. And then um, I d next to that is the another one of those little stamps that's supposed to be a push pin. And again, I pressed way too hard, so I'm going to have to cover that with something. And then I always ink all the edges with Tim Holtz Vintage Photo. And then on the back, I just put a piece of washi tape. Again, I put notes there, and I used two of those stamps and inked the whole thing up. And there you have another little thing that you can either just put into your journal or keep it on your clipboard, put it in a pocket. But I loved the way the paper was already collaged. And then again, I thought it was a little too monochromatic still. I wanted a pop of color. So I printed off one of the vintage calendars. I have a digital kit in my shop of this lovely lady. This is a, an actual book that I found in an antique store from the 1800s. And I just printed off um, one of the, two of the pages. And again, I used one of the stamps. Pressed too hard. <laughs> and put that on the bottom. I'm used to stamps with a wood block. I, I'm old school from the 80s, 
So I'm, I'm still getting used to <laughs> these kind of stamps with the, the foam on them. I'm not really good at using these yet. And then I just clipped the whole thing on. I think, what did I do next? Let's see. Oh yeah, there was a sticker that I thought was really neat that would go that would go well with um, these two folks. There was a little girl in there. She almost looked like Alice in Wonderland. Um, and so I decided to add her, add a little, add to the family here. And then I wanted to add a pop of color to the back, so I thought I would add one of these lavender sprigs. Again, this is, um, these were our clear stickers. So I just added that right there to give it a pop of color. To give a pop of color on the back. Now these ones are, are a little shiny, are a little glossy, but not as much as it appears with my camera light shining on the, on the sticker. In person, they're not, it's not that noticeable. So I really like these stickers too. So let's put it all back together. And then the last thing I wanted to do was decorate the metal clip. Um, you can do it a, a whole bunch of different ways. One of the things you can do is wrap it around the clip itself and tie a bow. And I'm not going to tie an entire bow here because I'm terrible at bows. <laughs> See, I gave up. But I chose to actually put the, the ribbon through the hole in the top. The other thing you could do is uh, there's enough space there that if you had some kind of an, a little embellishment or a button, you could glue something on there to just um, decorate the, the um, clip itself too. Here I'm just trimming off the edges, or the ends, I should say. And now we have a nice little decorated clipboard. And I really like the way this turned out. Make sure if you have a specific journal that you're putting it in that you um, measure the width and the height of your book. I already have this measured out so you see it fits in my journal perfectly. And look how nice it looks with two of these. They're not, they're as bulky as you make them. You can make them bulky or not. It depends on how much you, you put there. And I think I'm done here. So I really high, highly recommend these, your creative studio kits. One thing that I just love, I know I've said it before, but I love the fact that they're themed. And so if I'm doing a special order of, for something like, let's say, birds, I have to shop my whole studio and find everything that has to do with birds or nature and pull out a whole bunch of things. Well, sometimes it's fun to just grab a box of stuff that's already curated, cur curated for you, that's already themed, and that's what's really fun about these boxes. And you never know the specific theme you're going to get, so it's a nice little surprise every month. I highly recommend these boxes. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell because I have a whole bunch of ideas coming up and some, some, some new, some old. And um, I guess that's it for now. I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.